Would you harbor me? Sweet Honey in the Rock here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. At the close of the G8 summit in Germany last Friday, leaders of the world's richest countries reiterated their commitment, first made in 2005, to cancel all the debt owed by the world's poorest countries. But so-called vulture funds are companies that buy up third world debt at rock bottom prices, then sue the countries for the full value and more, are undermining any promises of debt relief. In February, BBC investigative journalist Greg Pallas exposed on Democracy Now! how one vulture fund, Donegal International, owned by U.S. resident Michael Sheehan, was trying to collect $40 million from Zambia after buying one of its debts for $4 million. Soon after, Congressmember John Conyers and Congressmember Donald Payne brought this up with President Bush. They brought it up a few hours after the broadcast on Democracy Now! And urged him to ensure the G8 summit would close the legal loopholes that allow vulture funds to flourish. Well, Greg Pallas produced this report for BBC News Night last week. George Bush has flown into the meeting of G8 leaders tonight. Near the top of the list of problems, poverty in Africa. But activists worry that G8 nations aid for Africa is being seized by vultures. In February, Newsnight exposed the activity of vulture funds. These vultures figured out how to get their hands on the money our governments give to help out Africa and put it in their own pockets. They do it by buying up old loans made to the poorest countries just before the loans are effectively written off. Then the vultures sue for ten times what they pay for the loans. We tracked down one of them in Virginia, Michael Francis Sheehan, also known as Goldfinger. Goldfinger. He's the man, the man with the Midas touch. Avoiding this question, aren't you just profiteering off the good work of people who are trying to save lives by cutting the debt of these poor nations? No, well, there was a uh, proposal for investment, but that's all I can talk about. Goldfinger paid just $3 million for some old Zambian debt, but eventually sued Zambia for $55 million. Worldwide, Goldfinger and fellow vultures are suing desperately poor people for more than $2 billion. Our expose sparked an international reaction. The next morning, the Newsnight report was rebroadcast in America. After watching our Newsnight piece, two very angry congressmen marched right into the White House and demanded the president do something. I was outraged, just simply outraged to hear this shocking broadcast infuriated me. It made me angry. It uh, was just on my mind. I couldn't even hardly focus on what the president was saying. Congressman Donald Payne surprised the president with the issue. He was joined by one of the most powerful men in Congress, John Conyers. I brought this matter up to President Bush in the White House. I asked him about vulture funds and did he know that some of the poorest nations were being taken advantage of in this highly immoral, ruthless scheme. And he said he was interested uh, in knowing more about these vulture funds operations. And he said we would get to work on it right away. That same day in Britain, a judge ruled that she and his associates were evasive and dishonest. Yet the judge had no choice but to order Zambia to pay Sheehan's firm its 15 million. And that upset some members of parliament. On March 1st, 85 of them demanded a change in the law to put Sheehan and other vultures out of business. Ministers faced repeated questions about why the government had not clamped down on vulture funds. And some MPs weren't happy with the answers. It is British law and British courts that vulture funds are hiding behind. What Gordon Brown needs to do is tackle our law, tackle our contract law, make it impossible for vulture funds to behave in this way. The Zambia case especially drove their anger, raising the issue of corruption. Here's something odd. Zambian officials agreed to pay Goldfinger $15 million just days after he bought the debt for only $3 million. Now, why would they do that? Well, According to an email disclosed in this courthouse, Goldfinger said the deal would be done because he was making a donation to the president's favorite charity. Now, could the president's favorite charity 
actually be the president himself. This was the president at the time, Frederick Chaluba. And here's his favorite shop, Boutique Basile in Geneva, where you can buy diamond cufflinks and diamond studded ties. Diamonds are forever. They are all I need to please me. Where he spent one million dollars on 206 suits, 349 shirts, each monogrammed with his initials, and each shirt costing as much as an average Zambian earns in a year. And 72 pairs of shoes for the diminutive despot, all with extra high heels. On May 4th, a British court ruled that President Chaluba must pay back 46 million dollars he looted from his nation's treasury. Lawyers began to wonder if Michael Sheehan might find himself on the other side of the legal process, too. His lawyers had admitted that any payments to President Chaluba's charity might in the end have been used in a corrupt manner. But he denied it was bribery. The U.S. government started to look for evidence which might indicate whether Sheehan had violated the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. May 10th, Tony Blair announces he would resign. The same day, his successor Gordon Brown issued a statement, I deplore the activities of so-called vulture funds and promised to work with G8 partners to curb them. On May 19th, Brown again told fellow G8 finance ministers that vulture funds were nothing short of scandalous. May 22nd, the heat is on as the United States Congress holds its first ever hearings on the vultures. Here, Congressman Donald Payne is taking testimony from activists, including actor Danny Glover. These votes are fun. Swoop in and freeze the mouth. 